If you want to hit some of the snipes I've hit in the background today, you need to change these settings immediately for all controller players on Warzone, or you will be at the mercy of Giga Sweats like me. If you've ever wondered why streamers seem to be so much more capable on controllers other than sinking tons and tons of hours into the game, then this will explain all of that to you. Because the average player in Warzone probably doesn't use any of this, whereas pretty much every high-end Warzone player or professional player at the bare minimum would use these settings. And it's not just in-game settings, there are things to do with your consoles and the controllers themselves that you need to know about today to be the best performing. Hopefully throughout this video, I can bridge the gap between players like myself who play for seven or eight hours a day versus average players who only have a bit of time. And also, some of the tips in this video are not only just helpful for Warzone, but pretty much any FPS game you're going to play, whether that's on console or PC. The biggest problem that makes players like myself far different from average players in Warzone is input latency. Input latency refers to the amount of time it takes for something you do on your controller to actually visibly appear on screen. And people who just plug in their console end up with huge amounts of input latency because there's a ton of settings that they don't know about. And the same also applies for people playing on PC. The reason I'm able to make so many adjustments and micro adjustments not only to my recoil control and my general aim is because I have little to no input latency. With little to no input latency, what I'm doing with my thumbstick is accurately represented on screen. And this makes me a far more accurate player and it feels like I'm fighting my controller less. Now, if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, there are a couple of things that you need to do. To start with, you need to make sure that your TV or display is in FPS mode or game mode. Now, game mode is a really important thing for those of you on larger displays like television because it massively reduces the amount of input latency that your display produces. If you also are using a TV or a monitor that supports auto low latency mode, you can find this in the display settings for either your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox and it's called Auto Low Latency Mode or ALLM. Enabling game mode on your display, whether that's a TV or monitor, and Auto Low Latency Mode if it supports it, will greatly improve the reactivity of your setup. The next two tips are platform specific. For those of you on PlayStation 5, do not use the 1440p mode that the PlayStation provides. It introduces double, if not triple, the input latency because it's not native 1440p, it's some weird downscaling or upscaling they're doing that massively changes the reactivity of the game. If you are using it, switch to 1080p or 4K, and I promise you, you are going to notice an instantaneous difference that will take you from being terrible at the game to utterly unreal. For those of you on Xbox, unlike the PlayStation, when an Xbox controller uses a wired controller, it does reduce input latency. You can simply plug in any Xbox controller via a cable, so long as it's not damaged or messed up, and you will have a more reactive experience using a cable controller versus the wireless setup. For those of you on PC, you want your frame rate to be entirely uncapped with VSync disabled, because the higher your frame rate and VSync off gives you lower input latency. You also want the game set to full screen exclusive, not full screen borderless, because borderless is buggy and does introduce input lag. And finally, you want Nvidia Reflex on if you have an Nvidia GPU. If you're on PC, you can also overclock your controller, which massively increases the responsiveness of the device, and I'll leave a link in the description below as to how you can do that. It's perfectly fine, it's not some sort of hacky cheat or anything crazy, it simply increases the polling rate from your controller to the PC, akin to increasing the polling rate from a mouse to your PC. It's really worth using, and is highly effective at reducing input lag. Now that we've addressed input latency, you should have a far more responsive experience in Warzone. This means better micro adjustments, better snapping onto opponents, just general better feels for your general game experience that will make your controller experience feel so much better than anything you've had before. And as a final tip, if there are certain games that support performance mode, like Call of Duty does, enabling performance mode and 120Hz mode for those of you who have 120Hz compatible displays will also give you a more reactive experience. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about the actual in-game settings that are going to mess with how your controller feels. And the first one is absolutely Dead Zones. Dead zones refer to how much input is actually required on your left or right stick in order for an input to actually be registered. 
and players like myself and other pro players in Call of Duty and other console games like Halo will always use the lowest possible dead zones. I have a 0.4 dead zone, you can go even lower, so long as you aren't introducing stick drift to your controller, because some controllers that don't support Hall Effect sticks will have mechanical problems, that is as low as you should go. I would personally recommend 0.4 as a start point, if you can do 0.3 go ahead, any lower and you'll probably end up with drift. Making this as low as humanly possible is going to make your micro adjustment experience far better, and it's something that I highly recommend. The next setting and the one that bothers people the most is actually the response curve. The response curve is how your controller reacts to an input, and a dynamic response curve is universally known as the best option for professional players and also the best option for you at home. What a dynamic response curve does is allows for your stick to accelerate faster when it's closer to the edges of the stick. So if you snap all the way to the left, you're going to move quicker, but if you're only left a little bit on your analog stick, you'll move less. And this is a really effective way for producing snappier gameplay from targets left to right, whilst also making your aim less sensitive when you're snapping onto targets. When your stick is somewhere around the center of the analog stick, you get very little input. And this is really great for slowly adjusting or micro adjusting any recoil control on weapons. And the amount of times I've had people claiming I'm using anti-recoil scripts on the MTZ762 over the last week or two is all you need to know about this setting. It is a really important thing and I promise you, it's going to make your war zone feel very strange whilst you're getting used to it. But once you get used to it, there are objective benefits over the other settings in game and this is going to make you a better player. And the last two are your sensitivities and ADS sensitivities. Now I highly recommend a 10-10 horizontal and vertical sensitivity, but I understand for some people that's a little high. So I recommend working around 6 or 7 if you're somebody who's just getting used to the game or somebody who wants to develop, but if you're somebody who is absolutely dead set on the best performance, 10-10 is in my view the best experience in the game. And I really just recommend once you set it to 10-10, play some multiplayer games or play some plunder or play something with respawns and just be ready for the fact that you're going to be terrible for at least a couple of games, but you're going to notice the game feel more responsive and more reactive to your inputs as you get more progressively used to that sensitivity, especially when you combine it with these other settings that I've mentioned. And finally, you have the aim down sight sensitivity. Now, you don't want this to be super low, because if you make it super low, you end up with a situation where your regular ADS speed, your hip fire speed, and your movement speed are all kind of disjointed feeling and don't work together in a sort of synergy. I would really highly recommend setting your ADS sensitivity to something like 0.9 or 0.85. And this basically means that whilst you're aimed down sight, your weapons are a little less sensitive to your input, meaning you should have a slightly more accurate experience, especially when combined with aim assist. And that is pretty much it to this video. These are all the things and all the reasons why I end up having this sort of crazy responsive aiming experience that allows me to do incredible things on controller. Now, if you're somebody who is super extreme and wants to use all the best settings, I use things like an OLED monitor with a 0.3 millisecond input delay, I have an overclock controller, and I deliberately aim to use the best input delay devices in order to get the best out of my experience. So much so that I even unplugged my capture card and switched to a network-based streaming system in order to reduce input lag. But just these basic fundamentals that I've mentioned in this video today are going to drastically change your out-of-box experience, especially those of you who I mentioned on PlayStation with that 1440p setting. It really does make a difference, and if you don't know about that problem, you wouldn't know that you're being held back by your console. If you found this video interesting, please drop a like, please subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next one.